Welcome back to another episode of Hard Knock Life. We have a special episode tonight. It's going to be a little bit different than what we normally do. Rather than a roundtable, uh, I wanted to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with our guest because this is a big week. Uh, if you've been following us on the Nerds of Color, you may have noticed that uh, we've been linking to this database that just went live this week. It's called the Cartoonists of Color Database, and I'm fortunate enough to have on with me tonight uh, the creator of that database. It's the award-winning cartoonist. Uh, you may know her book, Kiss and Tell, that came out a couple years ago from uh, HarperCollins. She has a new book coming out in a matter of weeks. I think she's about to go on a, uh, a very elaborate book tour to support that book. Uh, it's called Dragon's Breath. That comes out this month. Uh, it's the artist Mari Naomi. Welcome to Hard Knock Life. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on. I know um, you, I wanted to get into a couple of things. Uh, the the main reason I wanted to have you on tonight is that, like I said, just like five seconds ago, uh, the Cartoons of Color database. That's a pretty big deal, and I was just curious why you decided to do it. Because I know I you know, I follow you on social media, and I know that you've been kind of batting around the idea for a while. What made you like plop down and decide? You know what? I'm going to actually I'm going to do some data entry <laughs> because I have nothing else better to do. There, I suppose. So there's never enough data entry in my day. Um, well, I was working on um, a, a, an article that's going to come out at the end of the month um, with a, a literary magazine called Midnight Breakfast, and it was about people uh, of color in literature um, and about diversity. It's actually kind of a cool um, little article where I talk about, well, it's, a, it's a basically advice from people of color or people who, um, writers or specifically cartoonists, of color, um, advice on how to write a person of color or draw a person of color if, if you don't happen to be one. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was doing this, I was thinking, okay, well, who who are some good people who I could approach with this? Like, I obviously had my favorites, but I wanted to, um, you know, get get a, as many as possible, you know, quality people. And so I started listing off the people in my head, and that turned into a list. And then next thing I know, I'm making a spreadsheet, thinking, okay, wait, there's too many people. And um, I think I'd only come up with about 30 people. And then I started asking people on social media, well, who, who are the people of color who, are, who make comics? And suddenly, you know, there's... <laughs> 100 people and 200 people and I'm like writing these all down and I'm keeping this in a spreadsheet and I'm like holy crap there's so many of us I had no idea and it and suddenly I was you know I, I did a little research online and there was nothing like this online and I thought well there really should be so but when the database went live I think you were over 700 so that's a pretty big leap from 30 isn't it yeah, it sure is. I think, um, well, so I haven't, so since it's gone live, a lot of people have um, created new entries that I haven't been able to put in the data um, online yet, but I'm, just, I'm still maintaining the spreadsheet. And uh, so I think at this point, I've got 739 people. And um, yeah, that's 709 more people than I started out with. So, <laughs> but I mean, it's been a wonderful experience. I've, you know, People are submitting their websites, and every so often I'll get kind of curious. And also, I'm on Twitter. I've got a Twitter page for um, for the database, and every day, um, and this might not continue while I'm on tour, but every day so far, I've sort of spotlit a different creator of color. And um, so basically, I'm you know going through the list, finding someone who's good, and 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 just you know spotlight and and their website and. Um, and just by doing this, I've found so many great creators, and I've right. wasted so much time that should have been spent <laughs> reading, reading for my tour. But I've spent all this time reading comics, which is, you know, uh, there are worse there are worse ways to spend. Your time. <laughs> it's better than the data entry. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Well, I know that um, it's the, you know the 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 topic of of uh, cartoonists of color, and, and then just people of color within. A lot of, you know, not just comics, but like, you know, a few months ago, the hashtag diversity at SFF uh, kind of blew up on Twitter, and there was, there's been a lot of talk. I know that uh, it's interesting that your article that you're writing is about kind of giving advice to people who may not be of color to write about people of color, because uh, just the other day, Gene Lun Yang was here in the district in, the, in Washington, D.C. for the National Book Festival, and he gave this rousing speech that uh, we actually published on the Nights of Color this morning, um, talking about how Dwayne McDuffie 
uh, uh, influenced and inspired him and, and how the character of the Black Panther, who was created by white people, inspired Dwayne, even though there are some problematic uh, aspects of the character, maybe. Uh, but just the idea that, you know, people shouldn't be afraid to kind of write outside themselves, but there's a there's also a danger in that. Can you talk? I mean, I don't want to, you know, spoiler alert for your article, but can you, can you kind of talk about like that kind of terrain that people who may want to include more characters of color in their stories, how 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 best to navigate that terrain so that they're not, you know, just making caricatures and stereotypes of of us as they're doing their writing well, that or whatever. Is what the article addresses. Um, yeah, I, I read his his speech. That that was really great. I mean, obviously, race is on a lot of people's minds right now because of Ferguson and mm -hmm. you know, and the rest of the world and every all the horrible freaking things that keep happening. Um, but uh, this, well, the article came about, and they talk about this in the article when a friend of mine who um, is a white person, she. Uh, she wrote a book, and I was reading it for her, and it's is a great book. But I noticed that by the end of it, I'm like, there's not one person of color in this book, mm -hmm. and um, and so I approached her about that, and she said, well, you know, I, I and she she didn't know how to write someone if it's not from her experience. She felt like she would be, you know, having a token person of color. Right. She didn't want to do that, um, and it's just funny because like. I'm like her. Her best friends are me and a person who's um, Latin American. So, so she definitely has people of color in her <laughs> life. Um, and you know, I didn't know the answer to the question. Like, how you know, how do you write a person of color? I had some ideas, like obviously research and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, so I really, I was really curious what other creators might have um, to say about that. Part of like the idea is when you know when we when we think about like you know you talked about there are seven hundred. Right, and that, that list is growing, but over 700 people on the list right now. And, you know, many of them are independent artists, a lot of them are webcomic uh, creators, but a lot of them are also mainstream. Most of them are mainstream. So, and, and when you think about the mainstream comic artists, and this is something that, you know, is kind of dear, near and dear to me because, uh, you know, when, when I set out to do Secret Identities uh, a couple years ago, part of the impetus for that was when Jeff Yang called me up. He was writing an article for, at the time, it was San Francisco Chronicle, like, asking why are there so many Asian American creators in the business, like top tier creators as well. And you'd still, but you don't see like Asian American characters in the comics. So like that's, that's kind of like the flip of the white people's problem in terms of like they can't create, you know, they can't include people of color in their you know, lived experience, but a lot of creators of color kind of, you know, especially those who operate in the mainstream spaces, the big two publishers and whatnot, you know, are kind of expected to write these white, straight male characters all the time. Um, how do, how does how does that you know how do you navigate that? I mean, you know, it's tough. I, I um, that well, so I had a book with uh, Harper Collins, which was Kiss and Tell, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, it, it, it's about like a pretty broad issue issue. It's it's you know about relationships. It's about it's my romantic resume um, yeah. up to a certain age. And um, but the book that I wrote after that, um, unfortunately, they passed on, um, and they said it was uh, was not as relatable. I think was what they said. Um, you know, and uh, I mean, but it's about my experience uh, specifically right. as a Japanese, a half Japanese American, and I, I mean, I, and I've heard from you know this this is pretty common. Like people don't want to take a chance. Like oh, there's there's not enough people who's going to read this. Um, and on one hand, it's like, hey, well, that sucks. Everyone should, you know, get their voice, and that's the whole point about writing and, and right. reading is to get other perspectives. Maybe part of the problem is uh, are the stereotypes that you know we're inundated with um, growing up. You know, I mean, I, I'm I'm a bit older than most hoppas. I mean, in fact, I'm the oldest hoppa I know, and I and I always have been. So it's been really. I mean, I I didn't. I grew up in a very white town, mm -hmm. and and I mean. There were black people too, but there there weren't a lot of Asian people, right. and um, and so the only real like aside from my mother's side of the family who all spoke Japanese, which I don't, mm -hmm. um, my only exposure to an Americanized Asian person were these stereotypes that I'd see on TV, you know, the the bong and the you know long duck right. dong, all yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing, and I mean. 
I don't I don't know that I, I that I was consciously thinking this, but I mean it's offensive, and <laughs> I didn't like to see and and um and so I just sort of instinctual instinctively um over time just stopped paying attention to Asian American actors and actresses because I didn't want to see that. And every time I saw an Asian person on TV or movies, like it would always be that. Yeah. I mean, and I don't even know if this is the case with the, the the Charlie's Angels, but Lucy Liu was in it, and and I specifically and and it could very well not be stereotyped, but I specifically avoided that because I didn't want to see it if it was. I mean, I just grew to not to to avoid that stuff, and and I think you know that's my dollar you know, that mm -hmm. didn't go to an, uh, another Asian American actor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it kind of perpetuates itself so that this, here's this whole stereotype and, you know, it drives the the Asian Americans away, you know, like me. And then, so of course the publishers aren't going to want to take a chance on that. I mean, but it's, they're different issues. Is yeah, the I think a lot of it, a lot of it also kind of comes back to the, the idea that, like, you know, in a lot of spaces, white is almost considered the default. It's like white is almost raceless that, you know, we, and that's probably why you see so many, you know, this push for diversity in, in, in all kinds of literature, not just comics, but like I said earlier, science fiction and fantasy and young adult. Like, you know, we, we want to have that because we want to be able to see characters who look like us, who, who have our lived experience. But at the same time, the, 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 the publishers and the money to people who are, you know, putting these things out, when you know they don't necessarily understand other than maybe like you know a splash of color here and there for token purposes that that you know to them it's almost as if like well you know we're just telling we're just telling regular stories and like that's almost code for like white people are normal and then everything everybody else is adding like spice or flavor whereas right. it's not about <laughs> reflecting like you know the real world right <laughs> spice <laughs> Hmm. But but the but the but fortunately you know with your with your database I mean this would have been super helpful like five years ago when we were putting together secret identities because like you know we were just out there like looking at like, how many Asian American artists and you know it's 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 heartening too to see that there are just so many people out there in all in all the different spaces whether it's like like I said mainstream or independent or web that that are creating um, what what is your biggest takeaway? From like now, now that you're you know you're at ground zero putting this thing together, but like seeing all of these, you know, cells in front of you when you're staring at your spreadsheet. What is what's the biggest like mm -hmm. takeaway for you after after all this hard work you've put into it? Um, just there's so damn many of us, and you know, it just it it would make more sense to see our stories, and I don't know. I, I mean, I was I was just as ignorant as everyone else about you know the number of people, but. I'd, I'd heard so so frequently, you know, what people of color in comics, mm -hmm. and 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 I was starting to believe it, but you know, I don't believe it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also learned. I mean, I've never been into mainstream stuff. I do all indie stuff and underground. Um, that was my influence. So I'm actually learning a lot about mainstream comics just just by proximity, which is. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting. I feel like I'm getting a lot of exposure to new things, and I'm hoping. I really hope. Um, and you know, that's kind of the hope that I have of putting it out there, is that other people will feel the same way and just start clicking on links. I mean, it's it's addictive. Just like looking at all these great things. I mean, they're creators. They are creating things. You know, that, that's and there's so many of them. Just people creating things. I wish I, I wish I could make the database even more. Like I wish I could. I mean, it took it, it, time to figure out how I was going to present it. Um, I mean, I ideally I was like, well, maybe I could just send all this information to Wikipedia and someone will key it all in. And then I realized, no, if I'm going to ask someone to do free work, it's going to be myself. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you don't ask people to do that. So yeah. And, um, but I have a, I have a lot of people offer, which is is kind of cool to help out. But um, but I just I just did it all myself. <laughs> Isn't that maddening to have all of these like to have your inbox inundated with all of these like you know requests? Well, I, and... I kept I started a separate email account that I only check like once every couple of days because I you know I have this I have my job I have other things I have to do you know. <laughs> you mean so. this isn't your life? That's what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's kind of turned into my life, and it's yeah. a nice. It's a pleasant distraction as I'm counting down the days before my book release, which is 
a maddening thing on its own. Right. Wow, terrifying. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. oh, here I happen to have a book that I can. Oh, show. there it is. Wow, look at that. Dragon's Breath. That comes out the end of the month, right? Yes. Um, I'm I'm leaving a week from tomorrow to um, debut it at SPX though, and I'm doing some readings on the East Coast. Are you gonna be at SPX? I'm gonna I'm gonna try. That's my that's my neck of the woods. So. Yay! Yeah, I'm doing a, a reading on um, the night before at XPX at uh, in College Park, Maryland, at, I think at Big Planet. And I'm going to mm -hmm. be with Yumi Sakugawa and Box Brown and James Kachalka, and we're all going to read wow. stuff. So that's if you're around, awesome. you should come to that. Um, that's, that's an intimidating lineup of cartoonists. Ah! <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then once I'm in the uh, on the East Coast, and I'm going to be doing a bunch of things in New York, like readings at um, Bergen Street, in, Books or Bergen Street Comics with Julia Works, and that'll be fun. Yeah. And then I'm going to be stage for the um, Brooklyn Book Festival, and then then I'm going to fly back and then do my San Francisco launch party, and then I'm going to drive to LA and do my Los Angeles book party, and then go then the Pacific Northwest. It's going to be crazy. So yeah, okay. that might the the uh, database might kind of be on hold for that time. So well, let's let's kind of shift gears a little bit. Dragon's Breath and, and and like I said, it's coming out in a couple weeks. Um, what what what's the book about? And 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 how is is it like a follow up to Kiss and Tell, or is it something completely different? It's pretty different. Um, most of the stories in it are uh, originally appeared on this website called The Rumpus, and they were um, all made specifically for the Rumpus audience. Um, which it, it's different than Kiss and Tell. He specifically, the editor specifically, didn't want um, stories about romance or anything. So I, so I had to kind of shift gears out, out of Kiss and Tell. Um, they're really, I mean, you know, it's just, I mean, I was kind of trying new stuff out. I mean, I've been making comics since 1997, but, but like, I just, always, I always want to try new stuff, and um, like, I don't know, some of it touches on stuff that happens in Kiss and Tell, but it's about mm. a lot. It, I feel like if there's any kind of central theme, it's compassion mm. and me trying to figure out um, figure out compassion for myself and like how mm. I feel. Like, I mean, there's a lot of, I, I noticed a theme when I was putting the book together. I didn't notice as I was writing the stories. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, stories about homeless people Mm -hmm. um, and people who have uh, depressed, like, are depressed or suicidal. There's there's a bunch of suicide in this, and, and these are all stories about people I knew and, right. and how I interacted with them, and that sort of thing. Um, it's kind of an intense book. <laughs> it's not <laughs> quite as lighthearted as is Kiss and Tell, but I mean, there, I think it's still, it's still, you know, I still try to have fun with stuff. There's right. still funny yeah. parts. Um, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, one one thing that I was doing with this, I was um, inspired by uh, there's there's a woman uh, Cheryl Strayed who was um, anonymously writing as a, an advice column for the Rumpus called Dear Sugar, and that's how I got sucked into the Rumpus. Was I sat down and read like all the Dear Sugars in mm. over three days or something, and I'm like, oh, I've got to get in on this. <laughs> so, I mean, she it just it, it was it was an advice column, but it was written in. Um, it was more about her, and it was like memoir, like through through her advice, and it just it struck me so much that she was revealing so much of herself and revealing these really unpleasant truths about herself, and I wanted to do that too. Right, and I, right. you know, I I love telling embarrassing stories about myself, <laughs> like all of Kiss and Tell is like just all the most mortifying things that ever happened to me, or that I made happen. Um, <laughs> but I guess I guess. With with Dragon's Breath and other true stories, it was more about you know away from the taking a step away from romance and and just like okay, what are some unpleasant things done um, you know and and me sort of not working out those issues but a little bit like like the time I didn't give money to a homeless man and I felt right, all guilty right. about it and then he got hit by a car and it was I mean th these things that are like they're really uncomfortable to admit but I just felt like like. I don't know, maybe it'd be helpful to somebody if they read it and saw that, you know, there are other jerks in the world like me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did, so you, these were, these were originally published online. How did the, uh, how did they 
how did the book come about? It was because I'm assuming it wasn't the necessarily the uh, the plan when you started writing for the Rumpus that you know I'm going to compile these to a book. How did did the publisher approach you? Did you did you say after writing all these vignettes that you know what I, I think I should compile these together? How did that the the, the book come about? I mean, I was going to self publish it. Um... And then I had a, a book book that's coming out um, next year, actually a year from this September, so a year, year from now, called Turning Japanese, which is the book that um, Harper Collins didn't want, um, that I uh, that got picked up by my publisher 2D Cloud, and um, and so while we were talking about distribution and that sort of thing, um, I mentioned that I was going to self-publish this book, and and I, and I think. Uh, when, Rain was said something. Oh, I wish we had a, you know bigger budget or whatever, and could pick it up. And, and but I'm like, oh, that's okay. I mean, originally I just was gonna do a little fold and staple job, and then mm. I realized I had like 400 pages. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you don't have a stapler that big. Yeah, I mean, I have some pretty big staplers, but <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess I can hand bang this, and I'm like, oh, I hate, I hate that whole thing, and you know, yeah. so I was just gonna get it published, you know, self-publish it, and. Um, and at some point along the way, uh, they, those guys said, you know what, we're going to pick it up after all. And so, I mean, I'm so glad. I'm so glad they did because it looks so much nicer than it ever would if I had done it. I mean, <laughs> they, they did these, like, they designed this cover. I, I'm horrible at design. They did these, like, French flap things. Wow. I would never do. I mean, it wouldn't even occur to me. I'm the worst designer in the world. And, I mean, and they put all these, like, pictures of me in it, like, I would never, <laughs> ever put a photograph of my, like, that, that would never occur to me, but, um, but they did it, and it looks really cool, so, yay. And no staples. <laughs> and no staples, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I love making mini comics and, and making my own books, but it just seemed like, really, it's like 380-something pages, that's, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you mentioned turning Japanese because I also wanted to before we before we left, I wanted to touch on that a little bit because I know you've been you've been excerpting that on on again back to your social media. I've been I've seen some excerpts from that forthcoming book that comes out like you said next year, uh, and I was going to ask you was that the book that was turned down by HarperCollins? So you you've already answered that. So can you talk a little bit about uh, what turn is and and how that how that book came about? Well. So in the 90s, I, um, I went through this breakup, which actually occurs at the end of Kiss and Tell. So mm -hmm. turn, uh, Turning Japanese uh, starts where Kiss and Tell leads off, but it's not the same kind of book. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was going through a breakup, and then I got into another relationship because I was a serial monogamous throughout my 20s. And, um, and I ended up in San Jose, which, uh, was the, which is a really weird place, San Jose, California. Um, I don't know if you've ever been there. I don't really, I didn't enjoy it. Um, I was away, you know, but I was there because of the guy I fell in love with. And, um, but one cool thing about San Jose was there was this whole Asian American population that wasn't, you know, where I, you know, where I was from didn't really exist. Mm. Um, and they had these hostess bars. Um, and I've been to hostess bars in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, I, my, my aunt owned one, and so I was familiar with the concept, um, and I ended up at Bob at one um, in the hopes of uh, learning the language, and ultimately, my plan was to learn the language, then go to Japan, into the Ginza, into Tokyo, and work there some more, and then really nail down the language. Um, and at the time, you know, I was, I was like 22, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I hear they make a lot of money there. So, you know, <laughs> so that was the plan, like go there, make a bunch of cash, and then and then travel down to, uh, to, to the part in Japan where my grandparents live and speak to them for the first time in my life without a translator, which oh, was no. my mom. My mom <laughs> always translated, and I, I know she left things out. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I know, because I would tell her these long things to say, and it would come out as a sentence, if even that. And I'm just like, okay, this, you know, they don't know who I am. Right. I'd like to get to know them. And that's that's the premise of the book. And um, I did do all those things, but, you know, it <laughs> didn't quite um, turn out how I thought it would. Things never do, and it would be a really right. long book if it did. Um, <laughs> Or, but, or a really uh, short book, at least. Yeah, well, so 
one the thing that I didn't I guess um, take into account or didn't understand was um, what exactly a culture gap was mm -hmm. and that this was kind of my lesson in that um, you know at the time when I um, when I went to Japan and did all this I think this is right before I started making comics and um, at the time I thought I was gonna grow up and be a novelist and so in the back of my head I was thinking well maybe I'll write about this someday um, and you know by the time it was actually happening I'm like hell no <laughs> this, is, this is really tedious working in this hostess bar oh this sucks I never want to even talk about this ever again. This is so <laughs> stupid and annoying. Um, but I think it, I think it was right after Kiss and Tell came out, or maybe before. It was it was done with the first draft. Like it was it was during the whole like getting it published thing, which lasts for years. Yeah. Um, and I and I started doodling, and I kind of doodled the characters for turning Japanese over the years a little, but I kept putting it down, and and um. I don't know, just something sparked in me one day that I'm just like, oh, I need to write this book and draw it, and I did, and, it, you know, millions of years after the fact. Um, so it was, it was brewing for a long time, but, um, I, I mean, I'm really happy about it. It's, it's not in chunks like Kiss and Tell is. Mm -hmm. It's not shorter stories. It's a longer narrative okay. um, I've never done before. Um, and it's like, it, I think it's just about 300 pages. It's, it's pretty long. Um, I'm really proud of it. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very looking forward to. Uh, not that I'm not looking forward to Dragon's Breath, but I know that you said it's, it's a, a year from, so it's going to be publishing in September of 2015. Yes, um, but that, that's the plan right now. Um, I think, but they are serializing the entire first half of the book, and um, and the first half of the book takes place in the U.S. and the second half takes place in Japan. Um, so I think they have four or five chapters up so far. It's, you know, a pretty sizable chunk is online um, just right. for free to look at and, you know, all the crazy U.S. hostess stuff is up there, so. <laughs> yeah, the karaoke <laughs> bars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Was, you know, now that I think about <laughs> it, like, oh, it's kind of a fun job. It's completely humiliating, you know, <laughs> but, but it was kind of cool. Well, uh, for people watching, where can they find these excerpts of Turning Japanese now? Go to the 2D Cloud website. They have, um, and you click on my author name. I think that that'll bring it up. Or you can go to my website, marinaomi.com, and um, there's a link from there under mm -hmm. comics. I'm, I'm just really excited for not only uh, your books, but again, this database that's gotten us a lot of attention. The Nerds of Color just just from mentioning it. Um, and I feel like our missions kind of dovetail. Part of why we started the Nerds of Color was just to to show, you know, that there are people who are into like comics and all these types of things that are people of color. And um, it's nice to just see that there are creators who are like us and who are creating works that that speak to people like us. Um, one other thing I just wanted to mention about the the database is that you're also in the process of creating an LGBTQ database as well, right? Is that is yep. that uh, just the from the people of color database, or is that a separate database altogether? Well, uh, it's a separate database altogether. Um, so one of the hard things was um, when I was creating the database was uh, just obviously the sheer amount of data entry, and there's still a bit of that. Um, but my husband wonderful, wonderful human being that he is. He's a programmer, and he's like, oh, maybe I could make your job a little easier, and he wrote this program that made it, I mean, it cut the time down so quickly, and so now I have this, I mean, it doesn't eliminate, the, I mean, it, 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 you know, it still takes a, a lot of time, but it's instead of hundreds of hours, it'll just be an hour or two, which is, I mean, it's incredible. Well, Yes. I mean, unfortunately, I'd done a lot of the work by then. Like, not all, not, not even half of it, but I'd spent probably 40 hours on it by that point, you know, doing that eventually didn't end up mattering. But I, it would have taken much, much longer to, you know, finish it all. So, anyway, so I had the technology, and, um, and, it, and, and I, I don't know, I thought, well, you know, why don't I make another database? I mean, who knows? I'm going database crazy. Maybe I'll just <laughs> but um, but yeah, I'm bisexual and I I'm part of that whole community as well. And I just I was like, well, and I I don't feel like um, like the LGBTQ um, creators are, 
are, have quite the problem with visibility that right. um, people of color do. But you know, they're still they're still could use a little more. And, and I don't know. And I wanted the database for myself to be honest too. Right. Like, I, I want to be able to just go through and and you know have my queer comics. You know, and, you like you like sorting things. I think right. <laughs> You know, I'm, 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 I used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want, I, I want to end. Uh, I want to ask you another question, though, about the going back to the databases. Like, did you have you received any kind of backlash? Did you have you received any kind of like weird requests or, like, you know, emails that said like, well, how about white people? Do they can can they be included? <laughs> like, have you gotten any of that kind of feedback? I've gotten a little bit, um, <laughs> but you know they're idiots, so whatever. <laughs> I, I have gotten a lot of um, well-intended emails saying, "Oh, you should do this with a database, and you should do that with a database." And you know, I, I appreciate that people want to get involved, but a lot of the, the the suggestions they have will take hundreds, if not thousands, of hours to do. So. <laughs> So you know, I mean, I, I, I ideally, like in my perfect, you know, pseudo OCD brain, I would have everyone's information and and, and mm. have little bios and have little pictures of their work. But I mean, that's never going to happen, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, there are not enough hours in my life, <laughs> even if I right. quit the whole comics thing and you know stop trying to make a living. Like I just, there's not enough time. Um, that would be great though if someday I could hand it off to like an organization who has like interns and people who do that. Like that would I would love for that to someday happen. But I mean for now it's kind of my baby though, so yeah, I'm yeah, ready yeah. To give it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I know uh, that just the I mean the all the attention that it's gotten, it's it's only been you know it's only been a real thing at least for the public for for only you know uh, a day or so. And but. I, I just feel like the, it's kind of it's touched a nerve, and, and people people have been uh, really responding well to it, and I, and you know I'm just hats off to you for even coming up with the idea, and uh, I know that when you know it was just a few weeks ago that you were it was percolating that the fact that it's like live and online in such a quick turnaround speaks to just how dedicated you were because I think at the time when you were when you were kind of like taking suggestions and, and tweeting about it it was like probably you, I don't think you anticipated that you'd have it ready no I mean that that, that program that my husband wrote is, is pretty much that's the reason yeah <laughs> that's the reason <laughs> so hats off to him and also I mean just the, the sheer amount of um, crowdsourcing people mm. are just writing in stuff I mean that's so helpful. I mean, because a lot of the time that I that I spent on that was researching. Every time, I mean, for the most part, like I would just put people's names in and like maybe a website if I knew them. Like maybe I'd go seek, seek out their website. Um, but it was just the sheer amount of work. It was insane. Um, but one thing that I did want to do was everyone who was deceased. I wanted to write in their information because they're not going to do it for me. Right. So I, I did go through and 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 do a lot of research on on the people who died, um, just right. you know, to be nice. Um, but I, I know I missed a couple, and you know, and, and I'm hoping that people will you know rally up and and help me out with it by. Yeah. You know. Well, that that's the best thing about it being so essentially a living document that it's it's not it's what what's online now is not meant to be like the end all be all. It's it's going to grow and change and continue. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, it'll just flourish with all the new people of color who decide, hey, they can make comics. I can make comics, and yeah. they, I mean, just millions. I want millions of them. <laughs> <laughs> you won't actually input them all, but you want millions. Well. <laughs> <laughs> can you just uh, give a quick uh, one more release date for uh, Dragon's Breath and? Uh, when when we can find you on the road? I think it's coming out. Uh, Dragon's Breath and other true stories. Again, uh, September thirtieth, I think is the release date. But um, maybe like I know they're doing pre-orders and stuff. And and um, will there be copies available at SPX? Yes, yes. So we've got we've got some copies for SPX and for the Brooklyn Book Book Festival and all the readings that I'm going to be doing. Um, so all that information is on my website on how to find me. Um, it's exciting. <laughs> So, Thank you, Keith. I appreciate this. This is I'm I'm glad to get the word out for this database. I'm really happy that people are responding well, and, and I'm not getting a lot more racist assholes, you know, <laughs> asking me 
we're white people of color. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's that's the, the, they exist unfortunately because of the internet. But <laughs> the fact that you haven't haven't been inundated that's that speaks volumes to. I just want them. them. I mean, they're <laughs> there. I just I just don't pay attention to them. So that's probably the smartest. That's the smartest advice you could give. It's just you know what, just <laughs> don't don't listen. I'm not going to change their I, minds. I mean, they're so, they're so, their heads are so far up their butts. Like, they're not going to listen to me, a woman of color. Like, right. to, yeah. Yeah, I need, <laughs> I need to learn that skill though, because I, I tend to fall down those rabbit holes when I, when I see like racist uh, commenters uh, talking about things that I've written on the internet, and I, I stop. I, I try to stop myself from hitting like, you know, continue, but. I, I can't help it, and I don't even. It's not like I'm responding to them. I'm not like replying to them. Are you motherfucker? But I just, I the masochist in me. I just like can't <laughs> help reading about these people who think I who think I'm the racist because you know nerds of color. But um, but anyway. That's exactly what I was getting. It's so stupid. I'm like, someone said, "Who's the racist now?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> it's still you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much that, and we'll 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 make that the last word. Uh, again, I want to thank <laughs> Mari Naomi uh, for for everything that you're doing. Uh, check out her website, marinaomi.com. Find her on the road. Uh, buy, buy Dragon's Breath, and go ahead and buy Kiss and Tell again if you haven't already. Um, and check out the Cartoons of Color database. I'm Keith Chow. You're watching Hard Knock Life on the Nerds of Color, and I'll see you next time. Kind. More like the people in the world seeking perspectives with a different line. The kids who share the interest together with a similar kind. When they said John Glover for Spider Man, they didn't mind. The activists, directors, comments, and the lectures. Fanboys, professional artists, and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC.